Hello everyone, it's Miss Quids again. In today's video, we are going to be having a look at image magic again. So in the last video, we had just an introductory look at image magic and some of the things it can do. And in today's video, I am going to be taking a look at doing some animation. There are lots and lots of things that you can do in image magic with regards to animation, way more than I can cover in this one video. So what I will be looking at is just the three of the main kinds of animations that you can do with image magic, the differences between them and some of the different kind of arguments that you can play around with. The output that is produced by image magic when you make an animation is a GIF. Now, I realise that it is probably pronounced GIF correctly, but as a British person, GIF makes me think of a cleaning product that is now called SIF. So I'm going to be pronouncing it GIF. So bear with me if that bothers you. There are three kinds of animations that you can make with image magic. These are coalesced animations, overlay animations and cleared frame animations. So it's obviously not you know, very important to be able to remember the difference between each of these. And I sometimes get confused between a couple of them that can be quite similar. But we will be looking at the differences between these and how you can create them. The images that I have to hand today to make some animations are these images of Wilbur, the GIMP mascot. I created these images in GIMP using a brush tool which creates a different image or slightly different image of Wilbur each time. Now each of them, there's one with a pepper, one with nothing at all, the standard one with the paintbrush and some flowers. Now I know that when I created these I was slightly off in where I generated them but you know just for the sake of a demo I thought it's good enough. Now the first kind of animation we are going to be looking at is a coalesced animation. This kind of animation is probably what you think of when you think of a gif and that is each frame of the animation is or rather each image that you put in the animation will be what you see at that frame in its entirety. So let's have a look at how we can create this. It's going to use the convert command, which we have seen before. And I said at the time, convert does a lot of different things. So if we start this, we're going to start off with convert. And there are a couple of different arguments you can work with. There's a delay argument, which says how many hundredths of a second before you put the next frame. So I'm going to do half a second because I did a, a few experiments and this came out as the best result for this particular example. And there is also a loop argument. So the loop argument, you don't actually have to enter. I'll just enter it to show what it looks like. The default value, if you, if you weren't to provide the loop argument, is it would give a default value of zero. That means it's an infinite loop or the GIF is going to loop forever and ever and won't stop. And then you just provide the images that you want within this animation. So I have the images that I want to save as PNGs. They are the only PNGs in that folder. So I can actually just simply go asterisk.png. If you had a list of them, you could just provide the list here, one after the other. And I just want to give the name of the file that I want to produce at the end. And that is it. That is the simplest, kind of easiest, and definitely the shortest command to make an animation that I know of in Image Magic. So let's just run that. And what do we get as the result? The result we get is, as I've already explained, each of the different frames or images that is played one after the other. And this is why I mentioned before about the fact that I wasn't so precise about where I put the brush stroke of the image of Wilbur in each case before I saved it, but at least it's kind of showing the technique here and you could probably do a better job if you're a bit more precise than I am. But that shows the first kind of animation, coalesced animations. Let's have a look at another kind of animation. The second kind of animation I'm going to look at is an overlay animation. Now the name kind of suggests what it does. Each new animation overlays or adds more to the animation. We're not taking anything away. And again, we are going to be starting off with the convert command. I'm going to, again, apply a delay, but this time of a whole second or 100, 100 of a second. And so that we can have something a bit more interesting to look at. Well, first I need to, because I'm doing an overlay animation, I actually need to say what the size of the final animation needs to be. 
Funnily enough, you do this through the size argument, which I'm going to give a thousand by a thousand as the input. I'd like the background to have a colour just to keep things interesting. So I'm going to say XC sky blue. There are obviously other colours that you can refer to as well. This is just going to be a sky blue one. Now I have those four Wilbur images, Wilbur 1, 2, 3 and 4.png. And the way that I'd like this overlay animation to work is that I'd like to place each of those images at a different location on the screen. And at the end, I want to have it so that all of those four images are all showing at the same time. So you can think of I'm going to be splitting the screen into four equal sections and I want to place the first image, Wilbur 1, in the top left, the second image in the top right and then the bottom left, bottom right. So the way that we can do this is there's a command called page or an argument called page rather and you then give it a value which is the x and y coordinates of what you'd like to come next. So top left is just going to be the origin or zero zero and I like that to be Wilbur one. For the second one and we're just going to keep on adding page for the second one it's going to be 500 zero so that is the origin being the top left of the screen so 500 zero is going to be 500 from the left which is going to be exactly halfway because we have a size of a thousand by a thousand and still at the top so that's going to put it into the top right it's going to be Wilbur 2 and then we do the same for the other two images and then we have all of the different Wilbur images provided. Now I'm going to just include the name of the GIF at the end overlay.gif and let's have a look at what this produces. The way this works is that you start off with our sky blue background and then each of the images gets placed in turn in the locations that we specified with the page arguments and then when it's finished it returns to the beginning which is just the sky blue background. So as you can see we're overlaying, we're not taking away, we are just adding on top and then at the beginning we reset. So that's the second kind of animation. The third one that I would like to have a look at is called cleared frame animations. These appear quite similar to overlay animations but there is a difference and the main difference is is that rather than I'm going to set it up in a very similar way to this one but rather than just adding the next Wilbur onto this onto the screen what we're going to do is we're going to show one Wilbur then we'll revert back to the background which is the sky blue and we'll show the second Wilbur revert back to the background and then the third Wilbur revert back to the background and there will be an addition an additional argument in order to do this as well. So let's have a look at the cleared frame animations. So the animation returns to the original state before the next frame comes. We're going to start with the same kind of setup as before. This time let's start with a delay of zero on the background and you'll see that this still works. We're going to start off with size of a thousand by a thousand again the colour as sky blue. The additional argument that I'd like to use is called dispose and I'm going to do dispose previous. So dispose tells image magic what the images that are going to come up next should do with what's already come. Now what's come already in this command is that we've set the background to be sky blue. So when we're saying dispose previous what will happen is that each of the images that comes it will be displayed on the screen and then it will disappear so we'll be essentially reverting back to the previous of just the blue background and it's probably easier to understand actually looking at the example so let's have a look at the rest of it is just going to be basically the same so I'll type that out now. So I've added the delay here as well as all of the pages and let's have a look at what this produces. So as we can see as I described a minute ago we have each of the Wilbers and he appears on the screen, disappears, so we revert back to the background or rather dispose to the previous and then we put the next Wilbert there and then it just cycles through. So that is the third kind of animation. Slightly different to the previous or overlay kind of animation but 
I mean, can have it working in a similar way. So you're, you're going back to the background each time as opposed to adding something on. So you can have an image or a frame appear and then disappear. One thing that I'd also like to say is that the dispose argument has a default value of none if you do not provide it. So it's, if it's undefined, it's essentially the same as saying none. That is what happened in the overlay version. So we didn't provide the dispose argument. So what it did was instead of going back to previous, it just essentially put each Wilbur on the image and then it only reverted back to the beginning when it had come to the end of that animation as a whole. Those are the three kinds of animations I wanted to talk about and I just wanted to give a little bit of a note as well at the end, um, a bit of a caveat to these techniques. Of course image magic is particularly useful for when you're kind of batching together various commands relating to images, animations, anything to do with image processing. So if there were multiple commands that you'd like to use to set up a GIF animation, and obviously you'd need to save to some intermediate format if you were going to work on it later, you should not save to GIF as an intermediate format. So there is an image magic intermediate format called MIFF, M-I-F-F. -F, and the reason why you shouldn't save to GIF in a nutshell is because it basically means that you'll get a worse result at the end. So if you save to GIF and then you later do more processing on that GIF to get another GIF, it's just gonna end up worse. The slightly longer answer is because whenever you save to a GIF, Image Magic does something called color quantization to reduce the amount of colors that are present in the final animation. So GIF, the format has a limitation of using eight bits of color from a 24-bit palette. To get around that limitation, it has to do color quantization. And yeah, in doing that, it, it makes it more difficult to do further processing to that GIF, essentially. It's also called dithering. That's another phrase for color quantization. So yes, just something to bear in mind. And so with that, we've had a look at the three different types of animation and a bit of an introduction to working with GIFs in Image Magic. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all later.